Hey and welcome to Never Into With Aragon. So in this video I'd like to go over my rogue AoE build, where we focus on killing lots of enemies as quickly as possible. Now before we get started, I'd like to give a big thank you to all of my channel members for helping me keep my channel going. So first off, let's jump to our powers. Initially we have our at wills. So what I like to use is generally just Duelist Flurry on let's say the highest hit point enemy and with Duelist Flurry in combination with our lightning enchantment, we can get those lightning bolts to arc off many times, especially since Duelist Flurry hits very often, since its cast time is very low, unlike the other at wills. Cloud of Steel could be useful as a ranged at will, but I just prefer to stick with Duelist Flurry and Gloaming Cut. Gloaming Cut used to kill off that high HP enemy when he is like the last guy left standing. Then for our encounter powers, I like to use Blade Flurry. You initially want to cast it from stealth, and then you could either go cast it again, then it'll go on cooldown, or you could wait for your stealth to regen, which it will usually in 6 seconds unless you get hit, and then you could cast it again. It depends. If you're just trying to kill a group of mobs as quickly as possible, it's generally preferable to just cast Blade Fury twice, and then you'd be casting like your Path of Blades and your Smoke Bomb, and then they'd all be dead within seconds. As for our other encounter powers, none of them are really very useful for AoE, unless you're like solo or something and you might want to use bait and switch or even impossible to catch. But ideally you want to focus on just maximizing that damage output on as many enemies as possible. So these three encounter powers are the best ones we have available. Then for our daily powers, the best one is the Whirlwind of Blades. You ideally want to cast it from stealth at the very beginning of combat. It won't put you out of stealth and then you'll do a hefty amount of damage along with increasing your damage output by 3% for each enemy hit up to the first 5 and then when you cast your other encounter powers you'll have that damage buff for them. So you would initially cast your Whirlwind of Blades from stealth along with let's say your mount combat power also while you are stealth. Those two won't break your stealth and then finally you finish with Blade Fury from stealth and that breaks your stealth and then you could cast Blade Fury again or Smoke Bomb or Path of Blades. As for the mechanics on the rogue, they're fairly simple. We have our roll which gives us those immunity frames you ideally want to use it at the beginning of a fight when you jump into the enemies so that when they hit you, you basically immunity frame and take no damage. Our stealth is basically very simple. Whenever we enter this stealth, any enemies we hit while stealth will deal that extra combat advantage damage and when we have it at 90%, that's 90% more damage. And that versus other classes definitely gives us an edge in AoE. Then for our class features, I generally run with Skillful Infiltrator to give me that extra movement speed along with that 2.5% critical strike. Then we also have our Oppressive Darkness giving us that extra damage whenever we deal combat advantage damage. You can of course use some other ones that might give you an extra damage boost but I just find these two to be the most useful, at least for my gameplay style. Then for our feats. You ideally want to run with Toxic Blades, it just has a much higher damage output with dealing that pure magnitude damage over time after casting those encounter powers. Then you want to be running with your Master of the Shadows to increase that stealth regeneration up by 50%. It's very good in AoE, especially when you get hit every now and again. As for the Whisper Knife, it makes it really clunky because it actually doesn't have this feat. Then you want to be running with the Duelist Expertise to gain those extra damage stacks. You also want your back alley tactics for more damage when your action points are lower. And then you want your Shadow's Flurry to give you that 5% to spawn a shadowy figure. Execution just isn't viable enough since enemies generally die really quickly that this doesn't have a chance to proc. So let's move to our character statistics. What do you want to be getting? Well initially you want as much item level as possible to improve this base damage. But you want to do it in conjunction with not sacrificing too many of these main statistics. You want these five offense statistics as high as possible with kind of ditching accuracy as your last priority. You ideally want to maximize power as quickly as possible and then jump to critical strike and critical severity. And this is mainly due to AoE mob environments, we don't get much benefit from combat advantage 
However, as a rogue, we do so gain more of it than other people. You can also, when running with a party, orientate yourself so that you gain combat advantage more so on enemies by flanking them. So combat advantage there would then be our fourth stat to improve and finally our accuracy. So in combat with regards to my gear I will get my crit strike and crit severity up to that 90% due to my potent precision giving that crit severity. You could also switch this out for critical strike and then also my bone devil's ribcage and my gristro horns. They'll get me those stats real quick. As with regards to the difference between a single target build and an AoE build, an AoE build you want to maximize your damage at the beginning of a fight. So you ideally want as many of these stats as high as possible at the beginning of the fight. And thus relying on things like the Bone Devil's Ribcage and the Gristro Horns isn't as great. But if you can get them to proc off like really quick within a fight, all the better. But most of your damage will come from just casting these three encounter powers at the beginning of the AoE fight and generally the mobs are dead after a few seconds. So now we move to our gear and as I mentioned you ideally want those Gristro Horns and the Bone Devil's Ribcage. They give a ton of statistics like the Gristro Horns 10% critical strike, Bone Devil's Ribcage 12.5% critical strike and critical severity. That's an insane buff and you can get those to proc off fairly frequently as you only have to hit for up to 10% of your max HP which can be fairly easily done with Blade Fury and then like sometimes with your Path of Blades and also your Smoke Bomb if they crit. Then ideally you want like these Star Rover's Bracers. Basically whenever you move you gain those stacks of extra damage and as long as you continue moving those stacks won't expire. You can see we have one of those stacks, then we have two of those stacks and there are the top left there as you can see here the Serpentine. The stack will expire after 5 seconds so there is that window of forgiveness. Then for our boots, you ideally want something like the Rusted Iron Leggings or your Greaves of the Light Guard or even your Forest Guardian boots from Vault of Stars. You could even run with the new ones, the Wasteland Wanderers, but I already have my combat advantage pretty much capped out so I'm not going to gain much benefit from that. But of course I could rejig around my stats. I don't currently have the Forest Guardian boots available to me on the preview server right now, so I don't have them slotted, but I do have them on the live server. These Rusted Iron Leggings are good, but they're really bad when you want to increase your survivability, as that's a whole 25% reduced incoming healing. Then for our weapons, you ideally want these Lionheart weapons. They will give you that initial damage boost of 7.5%, and you'll have it all the time. The drawback with running, let's say, like the Celestial ones or the Mirage, is they won't give you that initial damage boost. Mirrors are okay, but they're not the best for AoE fights where you want to maximize that damage at the beginning on your initial encounter powers. Then for our neck, waist, and artifact, that set of three, you ideally want this star set. This will give you that extra 10% damage bonus depending on how low your target's hit points are versus yours. The Actoria music box set is okay but we just can't get our daily power to cast as often for it really to be worth it. Then for our rings you ideally want like this red eyes glare ring. Of course many people won't be able to obtain it so try and get your hands on rings which are going to give you bonus to melee power damage. You can see this diamond ring of spite here. You could stack two of them and they will stack up giving you this extra sword icon up here which is your swordman's perk giving you that extra melee damage. As a rogue pretty much everything is melee damage except of course if you're on a whisper knife. Then for our shirt you ideally want this ebony stained assault shirt giving you that extra damage bonus when your stamina is full. Then for our trousers you ideally want these which will give you that extra action points whenever you critically strike. At least a chance to do so. Then for our artifacts you of course ideally want these storyteller journals. Many of you won't be able to obtain them so you might want something else like these dragon artifacts giving you that 10% recharge speed when you have three of them. However, in an AoE fight, you're mainly just going to focus on damage at the beginning, so you might then want something else, like these higher item level artifacts. They'll just give you base item level and more statistics, which gives that base damage. So you can see I'm just running with the Envenomed as my primary, 
then a frozen and also the flayed. The envenomed will give you the advantage of giving that damage over time, that's 19,000 initial damage, and then with that Charlefax's aura, you'll deal extra damage, along with increasing your own damage by 5% after you cast it, along with giving you the action points. Then for our enchantments, now with module 20, one coming out you could slot in those azures and they'll give you extra movement speed they currently give you experience gain but they will give you five percent movement speed for a rank 15 and for an aoe environment where you're just running from group of mobs to next group of mobs just having that extra move speed to go between those groups can be a lot more beneficial than just having extra forte from those dark enchantments 300 forte is 0.3 three percent that's absolutely a minuscule amount and you can only have five of them so i really wouldn't worry about having darks you could just slot in those azures but of course if you want to really min max you could probably gain another one percent more damage by having darks then for our offense enchantments you ideally want something like assassins or gigantics anything that's going to give you those primary statistics of power crit strike crit severity and also that combat advantage not too fussed about the accuracy but if you can uh, fit it there and you don't exactly need the other stats then you may as well stack accuracy from let's say these assassins then for our defense enchantments you ideally want like tacticals for that awareness or azures for defense or you could even use a radiance for hit points but keep in mind the higher you increase your hit points the harder it will be for you to gain these stacks from let's say the gristro or the bone devils then for our modifications you can see our gear modifications i'm just using a bunch of like crit strike of power and crit severity anything you really need to get these stats up to give you those percentages my buffs have worn off so i no longer have as high statistics right there these are the main uh four buffs here i'll go over them in a little bit and of course using that forger box and it gives us back those stats right there as for our neck waist and rings you can see we're just using combat advantage there that's really the only good stat you could get here except for maybe awareness if you needed then for our weapon modifications in our main hand we're using doodless flurry because that's the main at will we're going to be using in aoe and then for our offhand you can see i'm using recharge speed just to reduce the cooldowns on those encounter powers give you a chance to potentially cast one or two more while you're in like one fight of course you could always use something else like forte or crit severity but that's only going to give you 500 of a stat which is minuscule then for my other bonus here i'm just getting bonus critical strike if you need you can always switch to like accuracy or combat advantage or even power so then we'll go to our race and our ability scores. As for your race, I'm just running with a human, which gives me 1% to all of my offense and defense stats. That's like a 10% stat bonus. However, if you want more offensive statistics, you could run with like a Dragonborn. That would give you 3% power and 3% crit strike. Then there is, of course, like the Gith giving you 5% combat advantage. There's like the Wood Elf giving you 5% crit strike. And there's other ones out there. It doesn't really matter in the end of the day, but you ideally want to get one that's going to help you balance these stats. So I've just chosen a human. Then for our ability scores, for an AoE environment, you ideally want like dexterity for crit severity and movement speed. Especially with module 21 coming out, we're going to have our potions be reduced in how much crit severity they give. You can see they will only give that extra 5% crit severity on both of those potions rather than 10% and 7.5%. So we're losing quite a lot there. So you might want to consider using dexterity instead of strength, which would give that physical damage boost. Increasing your strength would give you a very minuscule amount of that physical damage boost. So I like to go dexterity, movement speed, and crit severity, and then also charisma giving forte and recharge speed. Now we move to our companions. In our companion tab here, you ideally want like Xuna, or you could even use Regis on an AoE environment. Regis is really good when you have like tons of mobs in a very close proximity. When the mobs are spread out, Xuna is definitely a bit better. You can of course use like the Air Archon or even the Cold Iron Warrior. They're okay, but they're not going to be the best. Then for your companion equipment, you want ones which are going to give you the stats you need. You can see I'm just using three, which give me combat advantage there. 
and then of course you're using those indomitable runestones to buff up the damage of your companion. Those are pretty much a must to buff up your damage for your companion. That's 20% on each one of those and they do indeed all stack up giving you that 120% more damage for your companion. Then for these equip powers you can see for enhancement I'm using that uh, potent precision to give that crit severity. Of course I would consider switching out to critical strike if I could but I believe I need the crit severity to be able to get to the 90% whereas I have other bonuses which are going to give me lots of critical strike. Then we're using our face spider to give crit chance and combat advantage, our black dragon ion stone for crit chance, our golden cat for that combat advantage, Staldor for combat advantage, and our alchemist for that crit chance and that combat advantage. And those just give us those extra percentages. You could of course use like Wolfgar and Dritz slotted in here, that would give you a teeny bit more offensive statistics. Then we go for our mounts. You can see I'm using the Arcane Maelstrom. I have made a video on it and why it's so good. It's because it deals that extra damage a little bit more than it should. And casting it from the actual stealth will give us all that damage to be in combat advantage. But it's not a big deal if you use any of the other ones like your Cauldron Fumes or your Crystalline Eruption or your Divine Intervention or even your Explosive Equalizer. Anything that has that area of effect damage. With a max bolster you can get this magnitude up to a thousand. Then for our equip power I'm using Opportunistic to give me those extra combat advantage statistics, those ratings. Then for our stable here you can see we're running with a bunch of those different insignia bonuses. We're using Artificial Persuasion. Whenever you use an artifact power, reduce our cooldowns. Using two Warlord Inspiration to buff up my companion's damage. And I'm using two Assassin's Covenant to buff up my own offense statistics, but it will reduce my defense statistics. As for the actual insignias themselves, I'm using a combination of like Brutality to some Dominance and some skill here. Then for our collars, just using whatever practical one here, it's just going to give you item levels, base damage, and also some combined rating. Then we have our unified, giving us movement speed. Then we have our supportive, giving us stamina regen. And we're also using the wayfaring for crit severity. You could, of course, use recharge speed, but I find the crit severity one is a little bit better when you're in AoE, since recharge speed isn't as much needed. Then we also have our sturdy one giving us bonus damage to our encounter powers, which is definitely better than the Atwill one, especially when you're in AoE. The Atwill one could be a bit better on the rogue, or it is a bit better on a rogue when you're in boss fights for that extra bleed damage. Then we go to our boons. Of course, in our boons, you ideally want all those offense statistics right here. That's our power, and then one of the other four. For AoE, you also want to pick up that marathon runner for movement speed and you also want like either these potion buffs or these buffs to damage against those certain enemy types then in tier 5 you want this forte and like recharge speed or action point gain master boon bloodlust is the only real good one here as for our guild stronghold i'm currently running with bonus power and i'm running with the uh, defense here and just yeah mount speed or you could run with in module 21 this XP boon is going to be changed to movement speed bonus giving that extra 10% so when you're running through dungeons you're better off with just the movement speed. Of course this group heal potion bonus is very good when you're running challenging content. So last but not least we go to our consumables. What am I using to buff up those statistics? Well as I've mentioned already I'm running with the seared tuna, the watermelon sorbet, the wild storm elixir, and also the Flask of Potency. And they will give me all those extra statistics. The Watermelon giving that extra power and accuracy. That Wildstorm Elixir giving that crit strike and also 5% crit severity. And finally the Flask of Potency giving crit strike, accuracy, power and also 5% crit severity. As for those guild food, the Seer Tuna, it's not really necessary anymore since it has been reduced. Now only gives 286 of a certain stat. And then of course I'm using my forger's box i don't have it on mythic but if you did it would give you that three percent extra power i'm also using a bell of empowerment to increase my companion's damage output i feel this one's better in aoe than the celerity one since the celerity one is good for boss fights 
when you have that longer duration and you want that actual damage over time. Whereas in AoE fights, you just want burst damage. And that's pretty much it for my entire AoE build. I believe I did miss out on my armor enchantment, which is this fire burst. The fire burst gives you that effect where you blast off fireball, giving that 120 extra magnitude damage, pretty neat. And then along with giving you a fire shield and blasting off a secondary fireball. And as I've mentioned already, the weapon enchantment is of course the lightning enchantment to give those extra arcs, giving that 60 extra magnitude. So that's everything for my AoE build. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. So if presented as well, consider leaving the video a like and if you're new around here, consider subscribing. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.